Good morning and welcome to day 10 of reading through Ezekiel together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the book of Ezekiel, uh, even though it is so hard for us to deal with sometimes, there's so much judgment. Please help us to know you better as we read through it and know your ways better. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 9, starting at the first verse. Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, Bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen, who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim, where it had been, and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man, clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side, and he said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill. Swing, show without pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men, the young men and women, the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down, crying aloud, Alas, sovereign Lord! Are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me, The sin of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say, The Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord does not see. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them but I will bring down their own head, on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in linen with the writing kit at his side brought back word saying, I have done as you commanded. This chapter continues Ezekiel's version which we began uh, yesterday in, in chapter 8. God had been provoked to anger and here he acts in widespread judgment. But his judgment is not indiscriminate. The loud cry of God summoning the executioners parallels the shouts of the people that God turned a deaf ear to. Six of these heavenly beings appear with weapons for slaughter in their hands. The seventh functions as a scribe, one who marks out the repentance among the people. The executioners are then commanded to carry out God's judgment. The executioners show no pity, slaughtering men and women, young and old. They begin at the temple, where the elders are worshipping the sun in the east. The temple had been defiled by idolatrous worship and is now further defiled by dead bodies. Seeing this absolutely horrific scene, the usually stoical prophet is compelled to intercede on behalf of the remnant of Israel, to pray and beg. God's reply doesn't sound hopeful. He simply reiterates the prophet's guilt, or the people's guilt rather. And his determination to repay them for their sins. Yet, even in the middle of all this destruction, hope 
is found in the next verse, as the man clothed in linen reports that he has marked out those who would be saved. We rightly think of God as merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, yet he is also a God of justice. Moved in this chapter to such determined, terrifying judgment because of Israel's severe perversion and ongoing disobedience in their life and worship practices. Israel had become just like the Canaanites, worse in some ways, so their punishment would be similar. These proclamations of judgment day after day are bringing to mind a horrifying reality that there is a judgment coming, but I think one of the first things we see here is that judgment isn't just for those outside of the church. The judgment starts at the temple. Judgment isn't just for other people, it's for us too. Mercifully, the Lord Jesus Christ has taken that judgment upon himself already. If he hadn't have died on the cross by taking our sins upon himself, then we would be in for this judgment too. I think it's probably right to be terrified by this kind of judgment. Not as our settled response to God, but certainly as part of it. Let's pray together now. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that your judgment is universal, that it is not limited to non-Christians, but that you judge beginning with your people, with us as Christians. Thank you that that judgment has fallen upon Jesus and not on me. Thank you that I can be called your child and I can call you Father because of what Christ has done in my place. Amen.